Leafs Lightning Game 3 tonight with the series tied at one apiece. There's a few things, Dave, that we think Toronto needs to do in order to come away with the victory and take the lead back in the series. Let's explore those options on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast, so if you haven't, be sure to subscribe to the show for free wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you all haven't subscribed on YouTube already, make sure you go ahead and please we would love the support um go hit subscribe leave a like and uh, leave a comment as well let us know your prediction the score prediction and who you think is going to score a goal tonight let us know in the comment section below um but yeah definitely subscribe that'd be that'd be great and share the video with whoever you can like we said thousand subs we're doing a giveaway thousand subs i think it's going to be a jersey dave i think it's going to be a jersey this time because it's a thousand subs it's a pretty big deal so we got to go big. I'm thinking Jersey. I haven't picked out exactly which one yet, but that's uh, that's a little tease for y'all what might be coming uh, if we can get to a thousand subs. So sub up so you can make sure that you are eligible to be involved. Uh, Leafs Lightning game three tonight, Dave. Uh, you know, it's, 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 they went out and they had a, a great big win night one on Monday. Absolutely punched Tampa right in the teeth. Five nothing. Uh, just just obliterated them on home ice. And then didn't quite stay out of the penalty box in game two. That cost him. Lightning scored three goals on the power play. They end up winning that game five to three. And now the series shifts to Tampa Bay, down to MLA Arena. Um, how you feeling going into game three tonight, pal? Um, it's, it's a big one. Like, you know, every game is important in the playoffs, but when the series shifts and you've lost home ice advantage, the pressure starts to mount a little bit. So uh, the pressure, you can feel the pressure, you can feel the tension going into this game, I feel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for, for, for those who are, uh, you know, rather, I don't know, new to hockey perhaps, or you're just trying to learn the game or, or you're just a, a casual fan. The reason why home ice advantage is so key in the playoffs, a like 58% or something like that of home teams win hockey games. So you already, you know, there's that aspect, but also when you're home ice, you get last change and the Maple Leafs were able to utilize that to, get Matthews and Marner into preferred uh, or against preferred matchups in yeah. Tampa Bay. They're not going to be able to do that. And Tampa's going to no. be able to line match and get whoever they want to get onto Matthews and Marner. It, it's going to be Sorelli and point. I'll tell you that right now, because when Sorelli and point were on Austin Matthews, they actually had a higher expected goals percentage while out there on the ice um, than Austin Matthews. So that's something that, you know, goes into it. And, and when you lose on home ice in the first two games, when you have home ice advantage, you do lose the advantage of having the line matchups because now you go into games three and four and the opposition is the one who's going to be able to really match up and, and kind of dictate how they want to play against you. Yeah. And and look, the, the Leafs have always try their best to move guys around and make matchups work in their favor. I mean, we see after a penalty kill, they'll throw Matthews, Marner, Nylander, or Matthews, Marner, Tavares. They'll do what they need to do to try to take advantage of those matchups. Now that you lose it, it's going to be a bit of a chess match, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, going into this game and what are, what, how does Sheldon Keefe kind of combat that? How does he, you know, try to get, you're not going to get Matthews and Marner away from, Likely, as you said, Point, Sorelli, and Kalorn. So, how do you minimize the impact that's going to have? 
And how, can you take advantage of maybe another matchup out there? Well, I'll tell you one way to maybe try and make that happen. Get Tavares going. Like, I, I think it's imperative for this guy to finally get going here. I, I don't think he can be as quiet um, offensively as he has been the last couple of games. And and this team still expect to win the series. It's just not going to, it's not going to happen. They need the depth, especially against this, this Tampa team. And, you know, they, their big boys woke up in the last game. You got to think that even Stamkos is a little quiet still. You got to think that he's going to get back home. He'll probably wake up in game three and our number 91 is going to have to, uh, try and combat that. So that to me, that's one of the biggest things that I'll be watching early on is, you know, is John Tavares, has he picked his game up? Because it, he really hasn't been able to do a whole lot. Um, we're going to talk about what maybe line adjustments we could make to help JT potentially get back up and running here and, and, and you know, what could best suit him. Uh, does, does that mean getting Nylander back there? Does that mean having Kasha up there? I don't know. We could debate that in, in just a moment, I think. But ultimately, to me, this team, for them to have success against the Tampa Bay Lightning, especially in Tampa Bay, you got to at least have another threat, threatening offensive line. And it can be uh, that third line if they stay intact of Engvall, Camp, and Nylander. But if you can also get Tavares, Mikheyev, and whoever plays on that flank going as well, to me that gives you so much more of an advantage uh, over, over Tampa Bay if you can get three lines going here. Yeah, and I think the important thing here with John Tavares is his his production mainly has come with the man advantage. Five on five, it felt like he's been he's been kind of tasked with almost being the matchup in that He's not producing, but he's not giving up anything either. Right. Uh, here's a little stack of here. So he has not allowed a goal, okay, while he's on the ice and has held a five on five edge in scoring chances at 10 to 8, despite the facing Kalorn. Uh, and he had a, the hev hev hefty dose of Kalorn, Sorelli, and Braden Point. So, like, Braden Point is, remember a few years ago, he was Tampa's most productive player. Yeah, he's dangerous. So, I think the the thing about with JT is he's not the, he's not a liability on the other end like we've seen in 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 the past, in all this season, but yeah, I know I I think for him he needs someone on his flank to help give him a little bit more at five on five help him help this line find some sort of production. So it's not so going to be that, Nylander. Go it's ahead. not Nylander. Like is that Nylander for you? I mean, it should be. Because you think about it here, like Matthews and Marner, that duo, like you're not breaking them up. They're so dynamic together. There isn't that other one. Like it's a big drop off when it's, you know, Tavares Kerfoot. That doesn't that doesn't have the same ring to it. Tavares and Nylander was supposed to be that big. All right, the drop off punch. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. It's supposed to be like the you know back with Pittsburgh, like the Malkin and. You know, rust like that secondary punch behind Crosby and Gensel. Like you need that second. You really do need it. Like in Tampa, it's Sorelli, Point, Kucherov, Stamkos. Like that's how it gets done. So I think, yeah, they. This is where I think they should have Nylander with Tavares to go, because you're on the road. You're gonna face the tougher competition. Um, but maybe they think keep him on the third line and you hope to expose the matchup in some way. Right, because then at that point, you kind of need to make him choose. Do you want to put – because you're going to toss out – right, your, your best line matchup is you're going to toss out Point and Sorelli. They're going to go against uh, Matthews and Marner. You already know that, that anytime mm -hmm. they see those guys go over the boards, those two are going to be coming shortly after. And then you pick, and then you kind of – John Cooper's going to have to pick his poison. Okay, do I want to send my – second best line against Tavares or do I want to put it against Nylander and that Engvall line who's been pretty impressive over the last probably month and a half I would say um you know they've been the more I would say scarier line offensively defensively as well um so if you have them split up you kind of do give them a, a pick your poison type of situation whereas if you keep them together 
Now it's more of a traditional top six and bottom six, right? Where your third line, that becomes for Toronto, instead of a top nine model, where you have three scoring lines and you're spreading it out. Now you probably are more so, you got your top six who could score and your bottom six who you're going to use defensively and, and, and matchups. And then a fourth line who you're just going to use sparingly uh, a little bit here. So it'll be interesting to see how they end up kind of um, – going about the lineup card. Sheldon Keefe spoke today. They didn't have a full practice. They just had a quick um, off-ice meeting before traveling. Get this. So they traveled to Buffalo and are flying from Buffalo to Tampa to avoid COVID testing. A lot of teams are doing this right now. I, you, know, you brought that up, and yeah, a lot of teams, especially going to Canada. So, yeah, California. you're traveling over the border, right? If you travel over the border, if you fly over the border, like if they were to go from Toronto down to Tampa Bay – they would have to do COVID testing for international flights. But if you drive across the border and then fly from Buffalo and do it domestically to Tampa, you don't have to do any COVID testing. So they don't want to risk any symptomatic cases getting picked up through that flight. They're actually driving down to Buffalo. I think they're driving tomorrow or today rather. And, uh, and um, getting to Tampa without having to do any type of COVID testing, which is smart. I mean, it's, it's, actually dumb but it's also it's you know for the hockey team <laughs> right they're not risking having mitch Marner or austin matthews be on the men for five days um not to say that anyone has covid but if they were to have some sort of asymptomatic test that and it, that comes back positive will they be out of the commission for five days right so um it, it's for hockey purposes it's smart for humanity you can make the argument that they're just totally skirting the rules in a way but uh, i thought it was interesting edmonton did the same thing they flew to vancouver drove to seattle flew down to la for game three uh, i know that the sixers did the same thing when they came to play uh the raptors they flew into buffalo and drove to toronto so they didn't have to worry about having to do any COVID testing and get popped for somebody and they're not going to be able to be with the lineup for five days so i thought that was interesting um but yeah they had they had an off ice meeting and sheldon keith did say that uh, he has not yet made a decision on what the um, lineup adjustments he's going to make, if he makes any. We did get some news, though, that Rasmus Sandin has been activated off of LTIR, which is hmm. interesting information. Whether or not that means he'll factor into Game 3, I guess we'll have to find out later today. But um, what we're going to do, Dave, fun little exercise, let's play Sheldon Keefe. Let's get the lineup card and let's see what we can come up with for what we believe would be the best line that gives the team the best chance to come out with a Game 3 victory. So uh, before we get to that, though, Dave, why don't you tell the good folks of listening to Locked on Leafs about uh, our show sponsor and good friends from Bill Bar. Yes, summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Bill Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacation. Throw them in your bags and your kids' backpacks. Make sure everyone has a bar so you're fueled for your summer adventures. Best part about Built Bars? They're healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both, and it's easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order now. So we've mentioned many times on the podcast, all Built Bars and their puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. How can you enjoy doing it? Well... Pick out some of their flavors, banana cream pie, churro, double chocolate, raspberry, so many great flavors. And every Built Bar contains 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You compare that to a candy bar, which usually has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Built Bar is definitely the healthier choice if you're looking for that. So make sure you go to Belt.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. So use promo code LOCKED15 to get the 15% off offer at Belt.com. Welcome back into the Locked on Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm Mike DiStefano, got Dave Morissuti with me. We're your hosts here at Locked on Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs podcast. Hopefully you're subscribed. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, appreciate giving us a listen. Hopefully you do enjoy uh, listening to us and you subscribe, whether it's via audio form, wherever you get your pods, or on YouTube. All right, Dave, game three tonight uh, down in Tampa Bay. 
I am assuming we see some lineup adjustments. I, I would be hard pressed to see the exact same, uh, you know, 12 forward, six defensemen. Uh, probably not going to see a change in net, but those 18 skaters, I, I'd be surprised if we see the exact 18 hit the ice tonight uh, at Amelie Arena. So we thought it'd be a fun little exercise. So let's 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 get into the mind of Sheldon Keefe a little bit. And I'll let you start. What is the ideal lineup, in your opinion, for tonight's game? Yeah. If playing First off, I'm going to say this. Playing Sheldon Keefe, not very easy to do. Man is very, very tough to crack. <laughs> yeah. Like, when we, whenever we think something is going to happen, it usually doesn't happen. But we'll give it our best shot. Um, obviously, we're going to start with the trio of Matthews, Marner, and Bunting. That doesn't change, and that should never really change. Second line, I'm going to go with Tavares, Nylander, and Andre Kasha. So I think that's going to be the change there. And then on the third line, you're going to have Mikheyev, Camp, and Engvall. And on the fourth line, you're going to have Kerfoot, Blackwell. This was the tough one. I think they're still going to have Kyle Clifford. I think they're going to have someone in there. As much as I want Jason Spezza to be in the lineup, I don't know if Sheldon Keefe wants to get rid of not having someone who can keep the Tampa Bay physical players in line. I don't think Wayne Simmons deserves to play right now. Uh, all right, so I'll go through mine. I also did not have Wayne Simmons in the lineup, so I do have him coming out after a tough game too. But my top line remains the same, Bunting, Matthews, Marner. My second line, Tavares and Nylander, I've got them reuniting just like you. But I'm going to keep Mikheyev on that line. I think that his speed really kind of will help flourish with them. And he's someone who can go and get the puck, get it to Nylander, get it to Tavares, and then they can kind of make those plays. So I'm going to keep Mikheyev um, in the top six and then have Engvall, Camp, and Kasha we saw this trio actually earlier in the season before Kasha started to move up and down the lineup a little bit and before he got hurt the first time. And they were a solid third line. Like this was actually the third line, I think, night one was Engvall, Camp, and Kasha. And they were really, really solid. I mean, um, you talk about turning defense into offense. That, that's exactly what this group was able to do. So I, I like them. I think they have great energy together. Uh, and David Camp has been electric as a shutdown guy. Uh, not quite, you know, filled the dough type of levels, but he's been fantastic as a defensive specialist, um, taking draws in the D zone and kind of suffocating players and just making the right simple plays to get the puck, um, puck up the ice and quickly transition it up into the offense. The fourth line, I've got Blackwell and Kerfoot. I do have Jason Spezza entering the chat here. Uh, I, I, like you, I kind of went back and forth, Spezza, Clifford, Spezza, Clifford. Ultimately, I decided on Jason Spezza, and I'll tell you why. I don't think that the Maple Leafs should be playing Tampa's game. I really don't think they should be. And they got to go and try and win with skill. This is a team that's built on predominantly skill. They have some size a little bit that, you know, mckayev has got a little bit of size to him camp, obviously, and they've got some muscle on the back end now as well. I don't think that they necessarily need to have an enforcer out there like a Clifford or like a, a, um, a, a Wayne Simmons, because if they want to set the tone, I think that they know like they have a job to do, but this is two games in a row now where they've stepped over the line. They've crossed the line and, and it's come back to bite them. Stick to your game. It's a skill game. It's a speed game. I know Spets is not as quick as he once used to be, but he is still skilled. And he could also help on PP2, which has been struggling the power play, just one for 10 so far in the series. You know, you kind of can slide him back into the to the second power play and help quarterback that thing. And he's someone you could slide in if you need, uh, you know, someone to chip in offensively up in the top six. You want to spell Mikheyev. If he's not getting it done for a couple of shifts, you could put Spezza up there and, and get him a couple of extra shifts if you need a little bit more skill out there. And I don't think you can do the same thing with Kyle Clifford or Wayne Simmons. So uh, I want the Maple Leafs to play their game, right? Outskill yeah. the Tampa Bay Lightning. And the way you do that is by putting Spezza in there over Clifford and Simmons. That's what I've decided I want to see. Uh, do you have any comments, I guess, before we move on? No, to I, yeah, because like... I, I, the only reason why I didn't have Spets is because 
that was the only reasons. I'm not sure how much Sheldon Keith wants to give Tampa the ability to say, oh, they're going to just think that they're going to try to skill it all up. I wouldn't be surprised if it is Clifford. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. I, this is this is what I would do. Exactly. I'm not telling Keith, right? Like, like he based on how glowingly he spoke of Kyle Clifford, and he was ready to double down and put him in game two if he hadn't gotten suspended. He's probably itching to put him back in the lineup for game exactly. three. But I would put Spezza yeah. in if I had the lineup card. That's all I'm saying. And it wouldn't be the wrong wrong choice, in my opinion, if they put Spezza in. Because I think he, de- I think he deserves the opportunity to provide a bit of a spark, dude. Yeah. And he's a playoff performer. Like this guy's performed time and time again in the playoffs, whether it was with Ottawa, whether it was last year, the year before, um, with with Toronto. You know, a couple of years in Dallas. You know, he came up big. So the guy's a playoff performer. He's got experience. Um, let him kind of go and and help you out on the ice. All right, the blue line. What are you thinking about the blue line? Is it remaining uh, intact the same way we saw it with the same six? Or do you think we see a change up on the blue line here? Yeah, I don't see the blue line changing. Like, really, like, I didn't see, a, like, a, a pairing that got exposed because, like, the penalty kill didn't have a great night, partly because they were out there so much. So how much can you put that on them? Like, the only one you're they, they could be inching to put back in is is Justin Hall and like does Justin Hall make this better? Rasmus Sandin, Rasmus Sandin getting activated off LTIR tonight, like literally as of you know we're recording now. It's ten forty five on Thursday. I saw that he was activated. Uh, Cap friendly tweeted this out at uh, ten fifteen, so a half hour ago, ten fifteen p.m. He was activated. Do you think they would have activated him if they don't intend on playing him in Game Three? That's fair. Yeah, like do you, I'm just wondering who comes out. Do you maybe take Lilligren out and you move? Like, like what's the move here? I just don't know what, like, how much they're gonna change. Like, mm-hmm. and it's also such a tough position to put Rasmus Sandin in. Like, your first game back will be Game Three. That's that's a really tough one, especially when you can't control the matchups. You can't control how you the play him. Very interesting move that they make because they don't have no reason really to 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 bring him in. Like they didn't have like he's been practicing. We hadn't heard anything about him being close. Well, right? he was he was expected to get into the final week of the regular season. And then it didn't happen. So I, I did expect to see him pretty early on. Well, I expected to see him activated and healthy early on. Whether or not he got into the lineup, I think, was dependent on, you know, what we saw happen with the games, right? Like someone plays poorly, he'll get in. It was one. It was more of he became the outside looking in. But I think there's a short leash on some of these guys, and it kind of has to be in a seven-game series. I also wonder about Justin Hall. Like he's a guy who's also – on the outside looking in right now. And and is he somebody who um, Sheldon Keith might be looking to put back in there? You know, he's been a pivotal part of this team's penalty kill all year long. Perhaps he's somebody who they're trying to, to find a way to fit him back into the lineup. Maybe they go seven D, you know, I think that could potentially be a, a situation. How many times did Tampa do that last year on route to a Stanley cup, right? They've done that in the past. And maybe we're talking about, ah, do we put in Spezza? Do we put in Clifford? Do we put in, um, you know, Wayne Simmons, maybe none of them get in. Maybe it's a seventh defenseman instead. Like the, it's, it's entirely possible that they could try and do that if they want to get these guys uh, back into the lineup. Um, I, here, I'll tell you what I have. I, 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 I don't want to take Lilligren out of the lineup because I think he's played extremely well, actually. Um, but I feel like Keith will take him out of the lineup. And that's where I think Rasmus Sandin ends up getting in with, with Giordano. I'll be curious to see, too, if, if maybe Justin Hall uh, swaps in for Ilya Labushkin. He's he's also been very undisciplined. He's taken three penalties so far uh, in these playoffs, and he's gotten burned um, defensively. Like I I wonder if Justin Hall, if they, if they want to get him in there, like you're not taking up Brody. Right, you're not touching Muzz and Brody. That's been a sound pairing so far this year in these playoffs. So I guess 
it's either Labushkin or Lilligren that's coming out. But which one does? Or do they both, perhaps? Uh, it's so – it's weird because, like, yeah, Labushkin definitely was undisciplined. There were quite a few undisciplined players. I don't know if you could take every one of them out because of that as well. Like, there was one penalty thing Labushkin got, and I'm just like, really? That's penalty? Yeah. So, like, there was a couple of those. Yeah, like – because really, I yeah, I think you're right. The only way I can see Justin Hall getting in is if Lubushkin comes out. So then you do. I just really hope it's not a Justin Hall Jake Muzzin pairing because we just no, know. God no. God, just please. So done with that. We're like it's over. Like the least, and the thing is, you you saw how well everything went in game one. Like you have to kind of balance it out a little bit too. In terms of the opinion of changing it to, yeah, but, sure. yeah, I think it's just so hard because like somebody has to just be either hurt or somebody had to have been so bad that you just have to make a change. I think Sandine goes in, Lilligren comes out. That's what I think ends up happening. That's the the one change that I believe we will see during this game. Surprisingly, I mean, you would agree that you thought that Lilligren has played well, right? I, I, yeah, I, I haven't I, seen a reason why we they should take him off. No, I mean, yeah, he, he was on the ice, and I guess, you know, he let Brandon Hagel get in behind him and, and you know, kind of allowed him to get that second opportunity to score in the game last night or the other night. But I was also see, looking up the statistics just to see how these pairs are working out so far. So Muzzin and Brody uh, have a 70% expected goals while they're out on the ice together. Morgan Riley and Ilya Labushkin, 48% expected goals when they're out on the ice together. Mm. Gio and Lilligren, only 35% expected goals while they're out on the ice together. They seem to be getting outworked um, and giving up chances while they're out there on the ice and I wonder if you like when you dive into the analytics, like I've liked what I've seen out of Lilligren on the offensive end, but maybe he's starting to soften a little bit on the defensive side of things, and those details are starting to wane. And if there's anyone who notices that quickly, it is Sheldon Keefe. And if he wants to make a move, uh, that might be the move that that he makes there, putting in Rasmus Sandin, who can play both the left and the right side, and he's been rock solid when uh, you know given third pair minutes and third pair responsibility one of the best defensemen in the league, realistically, like when you look at the numbers relative to competition, that is. And on the third pair, well, along with, with Giordano, I think that could, that, that could really work out well. So I believe that will be the lineup change that they make on the blue line. So Riley Labushkin, Muzzin Brody, Gio Rasmus Sandine. Interesting. Well, We'll see how that morning skate. <laughs> I'll be I'll be refreshing Twitter until I find out when those guys get on the ice. So yeah, yeah, definitely. And we'll we'll tweet that out when we see uh, the morning skate lines come out. You can find us on Twitter at Locked On Leafs. Um, also, hey, check out our Discord channel. Uh, why don't you tell the good folks where they can find our Discord channel? Uh, and uh, while that's happening, I'll pull up uh, our uh, bet online read. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna actually pull up our Discord now because we've we've continually uh, tried to find ways to interact with all you guys, and um, you know we've I included the Discord link in the last episode. I'll once again do it for this episode too. Just it, we're, we're it's creating the the locked on lease community. We've it's it's pretty active. Like I'm getting notifications every every, every hour, even yeah, more every hour. So it's very active, and it's a great way, guys. To just, just, you know what I find? Twitter can get very testy. It can get it can it, it the, the 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 Discord on Twitter can get pretty gnarly. On this, everyone's loving. It's it's a good time. I awesome and and you know what? Truth be told, I'd rather talk to some of these people on Discord than some of my friends who talk Leafs. A lot more <laughs> rational. Yeah rational and it's an educated bunch i'll say that too it's an yeah. educated bunch i mean when you're searching out niche podcasts and niche discord channels just the you because you don't get enough of a, a leaf fix in on a daily basis 
you probably are a very educated fan. And if you feel like you fit into that, uh, into that description and into that group, come join us. Uh, like I said, or like Dave said, he's going to put the discord uh, link in the bio of this video of this, uh, of this podcast, however you're listening to it and you can come and join the community. Uh, I also want to tell you guys about uh, one of our friends or one of our today's show sponsors. It's our friends at betonline.net. It's your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sport development league reviews and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, the NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball, and this weekend's run to the roses as the Kentucky Derby is back. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Locked on Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. We've got Dave Morrissey with me. Game three tonight, Leafs and Bolts. Series tied at one apiece. Who will take game three and take a 2-1 edge? Well, clearly uh, us here at Locked on Leafs probably have a rooting interest in the Maple Leafs doing so, David. And uh, in order for that to happen, I've come up with three keys to victory. Um I'm going to lay them out for you, and you let me know if you uh, have any uh, – uh, you let me know the keys yourself, whether you agree with mine or if you have any more uh, to add on to it. So to me, in order for the Maple Leafs to win tonight against Tampa Bay, first and foremost, stay disciplined. You can't take as many penalties. can't take any penalties, realistically, uh, against this Tampa team. They're just too dangerous. You got away with it in game one. You're not going to get away with it in game two or you didn't get away with it in game two, but you won't get away with it either in game three. They're too lethal, and uh, it's it's just not going to be a good time if you're consistently making trips to the sin bin. So stay disciplined, not only for that, but also I felt that this team has has outplayed Tampa at five-on-five, even in the loss. And when you're taking penalties, you're killing that momentum that you're creating at five-on-five. You're not allowing your superstars like Austin Matthews and William Nylander and you know, Tavares somewhat to get out there and play hockey, right? Like the minutes are really low right now for those stars because they're consistent. They're they're consistently sitting on the bench watching the rest of the guys kill off penalties. Can't happen. Can't happen. Stay disciplined and you can win this game at five on five. That's the first key. Second key for me, be stingy in the neutral zone. Game one, they were tremendous at, at, um, clogging up the neutral zone, forcing turnovers, and going on the counterattack. They were getting uh, multiple odd man rushes, breakaways, good scoring chances, and they weren't able to really do that in game one because Tampa found a way to have success breaking that down. Game one, they only had a 48% uh, controlled entry rate. Game two, 72% controlled entry rate for the Tampa Bay Lightning. That number's got to go down closer to the 48% for Toronto uh, if they want to win this game. Stingy neutral zone. And then thirdly, they got to create some chaos in front of Andre Vasilevsky. If that guy sees a puck, he's going to save a puck. Um, we've seen a couple of, of times where he's been – there has been some bodies in front. I think both of Mitch Marner's goal, you know, Muzzin's goal to open up the series. Um, you know, there's been a, a handful of goals where there's been traffic in front of the net and he's lost sight of the puck and you've been able to to score, get on the uh, the, the scoreboard. So you got to keep creating uh, chaos in front of Vasilevsky and just get to the net and try and create rebounds, right? I know that he's a guy who swallows up everything, but if you can get in his grill and not allow him to pick up those pucks so quickly, maybe he's not able to react quick enough to get the full save and he does create a rebound and then pounce on that rebound. That's where I'm looking at John Tavares to be successful in and around the crease. That's where he's been. You know, that's been his bread and butter for years right up in his kitchen. So uh, Michael Bunting too has scored a lot of goals from right at the lip of the crease. Uh, so that that's what I need them to do. Stay disciplined, uh, be stingy uh, through the neutral zone and just create chaos in front of Vasilevsky. Those to me, they do those three things. They have a great chance to win game three. Pretty much agree with most of them. Um, to add to the discipline part, I think your composure too, right? Composure has to be key. And, and what I mean by composure is not just don't take the bad penalties, but if you have something that goes against you where you don't get a call or, you know, Tampa scores on an unlucky break like the, like Hedman did in the at the end of at the end of the first period of game one or game two, sorry, 
don't let it don't let it rattle you. Don't let it change how you approach you know the rest of the game because I felt like that's what happened in game two. Mm-hmm. And I'm also going to add that to the Vasilevsky part. Get him moving. Get bodies in front of the net. Right. I, that Mitch. Both of Mitch Marner's goals that he has scored, the one he scored in game one. So much traffic. Vasilevsky didn't know whether to go left or right. He guessed wrong. Marner scores. And the second one he scored. First of all, like there was just a wall. Like it was just, it was, it was so, it was like a soccer wall in front of Vasilevsky. And Marner was able to get it in. Shout out also that he scored with his grandmother in the building. Yes. Forgot about that yesterday. He did say uh, the Leafs were going to win 3 2, and that didn't happen, but we'll let it slide. This is Mrs. You Marner. just, you, you can't disappoint Nana past, you know, no. you got to make her, you got to, Nanny, you gotta Nanny Marner. Yeah, Nanny Marner. Hopefully she'll be in attendance for a win at some point here through the playoffs. Uh, continue, Dave. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, so the, getting the traffic, getting him, getting Vasilevsky moving, and he's a big goalie, so you're going to have to try your best to disrupt him somehow. You can't just let him get comfortable in his position and his spot on the ice there. And then my, the one other thought for me is, Victor Hedman was such a beast in game two because he was kind of allowed to do his thing. You got to go at Victor Hedman. You got to force him to defend. There's yeah, a few. It's tough to do. The, the guys are 6'4, 220. It's you hard to go your, that's, that's, where you, that's where the speedy guys like Camp, Mikhaev, Engvall, whoever get, draws that matchup, just make him yeah. backpedal. And that was what we saw happen in game one, right? Like they were using their speed um, off the edge and, and kind of cutting into the middle and getting chances that way. We weren't really able to see much of that in Tampa. That was an adjustment that they made. They weren't allowing that. They were doing a good job um, of getting back and, and staying on top of pucks. And really when they tried to glide and get around to the outside, they just pushed them all the way uh, and kept them to the perimeter, and they weren't able to do anything with the puck. They negated all those chances and negated the speed of the Maple Leafs. You're right. That is something that they're going to have to do is try and work that speed element back into the game and get past and get in behind these guys again and get those good opportunities um, off the rush and also you know some breakaways, odd man rushes. That's kind of been the bread and butter of the Maple Leafs a lot of the time offensively. Uh, yeah, I, I think as long as they do those things, they – they should come away with a victory in game three. I, I think that they definitely should. Yeah. No, I, I think they've owned the play at five on five. Really have to cone in a little bit more on special teams or it's, try your best to not make special teams as big of a factor as they've been in the first two games. Try to keep the yep. game at five on five. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely, Dave. All right, uh, should be a good one tonight, a 7.30 puck drop down in Tampa Bay. You can watch it on Sportsnet, CBC. Also listen to it, uh, Joe Bowen and Jimmy Ralph will have the call on TSN 1050 Radio, a 7.30 puck drop once again. That's going to do it for us here today on the podcast, though. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked on Leafs podcast on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Follow the show at Locked on Leafs. And make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube as well. That's Locked on Leafs on YouTube. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Um, actually, Monday. We'll be back on Monday yeah. with an episode, and we'll have games three and game four to break down for you. So uh should be a fun couple of days down in Tampa Bay for the Maple Leafs. Let's hope they can pull out at least one, if not two, victories and come home happy Monday night to Toronto. That's going to do it for us here today on the pod. Until next time, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.